Well, again, Happy New Year, and uh, the first question I have on this independent sermon, a one time and, and done, is uh, what was your first thought of the year? Now, this is kind of a, an interesting question in how you answer it, because I talk to probably more people, this is non-scientific, but over half the people I talked to here today said, I was in bed by 8.30 or 9 or 10.30. Pastor, when you're over 60, they said, you know, you're just done with that. Got the t-shirt, got the trophy, you're done. You're ready to go to bed. So then I talked to some folks. It's rather interesting. They're like over 75, and they stayed up till 2 in the morning. So just a show of hands, uh, how many people went to bed before midnight? Oh, wow. Surprise. And I don't need the rest of the hands because I assume you didn't go to bed like at midnight. That's kind of odd. Um, you stayed up later than that. Well, I went to a, an outdoor party last night, was planning to stay there till midnight and about 1020. I'm like, let's get going. And so, yeah, I was exuberant and excited, but I guess I'm over 40. So it's time to, to you know, but what was that first thought you had? For some of you, if uh, you stayed up late, that was kind of like maybe at 12.30 or 1, you know. Uh, My first one was love. Just love was the first thing that, because I I was thinking, I've got to tell these people in the morning because I know what my question is, right? So the first thing on my my mind was love, right? For some of you that went to bed at 10, the first thing on your mind was, why did I set the alarm this early? There are a lot of things that that come first. And when I found out that I was preaching on this Sunday, and this Sunday happened to be the first Sunday of the year, I got very excited. Uh, First of all, because I just love sharing God's word with you, with each one of you. But second, because we get to talk about the first, the first of the year, the first time to hear the gospel again, the first time to make a new, fresh start, right? And I got to thinking, what does the Bible have to say about firsts? right? And if you look at it, it's rather encouraging, okay? God is a God of firsts. In fact, God reveals himself to us in firsts. If you look at the Bible and look at all the firsts, in the Old Testament, there, the word is reshith, and it's used 51 times, okay? This is the first, and it's right at the beginning of the Bible. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So it could be like in the first, okay? The chiefly, in the beginning, you know? And it got me thinking of a story I once heard of a Baptist preacher, he was up there preaching and uh, he said, you know, we've come a long way from back in the days when we thought, you know, like only Baptists are going to heaven or only assemblies of God are going to heaven or only Catholics. He says, but I do have to tell you in this Baptist crowd, he says, uh, we Baptists, we're going to be the first in heaven. Right. And so it was a holiday season around Christmas time and someone had relatives in town who were not Baptist. And an Episcopal lady had the, the gumption to actually stand up. She says, I beg to differ with that comment. He says, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. And she says, I'm Episcopal and the Episcopals are going to be the first in heaven. And he didn't want to argue. So he says, well, ma'am, he says, I, I actually think that you're right, because there is a phrase in the Bible that says the dead will be raised first. Notice I kept Lutherans out of that. (laughs) Although at times we've been called the frozen chosen. I'm going to leave that there. Not us, of course, at St. John here by any by any means, you know, but God reveals himself in first. He starts right at the beginning. And it's important we don't uh, misuse God's word like that poor Baptist preacher did. Right. Uh, We need to look at the first and say, you know, what does God say about first? And it's very important to him. He starts at the beginning. He says, hey, at the beginning, at the first when it started, I created it all. And we sometimes gloss over that first sentence. And we think, well, that's the beginning. Everybody knows that. Even if they don't know the Bible, they just know in the beginning, right? But how precious and good is that even in the first day of 2017? Because God created all that we need and have to exist. So the first thing he did was to think about you. You just think of the design of your body. If you've ever gone to an eye doctor, can you imagine how intricate our eyes are and how we never knew this until the last 100, 200 years trying to figure out all the medicine inside of us, the medical components, how we're made? It's phenomenal how our eye is made. And our heart, our body, our metabolism, Right? The way we, uh, the cycle of our sleep, which is so scheduled around the way God even had the earth to turn. Uh, They're learning about the magnetic field uh, more and more through satellites and how our our earth stays in place because God just put it 
that way and things don't fly off of it with gravity. I mean, you just think about all the things God did when he said in the beginning and his breath came forward and things were created, right? So right from the first, God was thinking of you and a place that he wanted you to dwell. In fact, Adam and Eve, they were on a first name basis with God, right? I mean, they didn't have the last name. They just, they were walking with God in the cool of the day. They could talk with him. Uh, He was the first one they would ask questions of. He was the first one that, that told them how to eat, what to do, or how to live, right? God is a God of firsts. And then he gave them uh, their first choice, if you will, a choice to love them or to disobey. And we all know how the story went. I th- find it cute that sometimes, we, you probably think this as well, you're like, you know, what if Adam and Eve had not sinned? You think this often when you're like in pain, right? You're like, oh, I wouldn't be feeling this if this was a perfect world. But then if they weren't the first, someone else would, right? Definitely not anybody related to you by any means, I'm sure. But they messed up, and and immediately in Genesis 3, God said, you know what, I'm going to send a Savior, I'm going to send somebody, and this goes to the next verse. God has given us his firstborn son, right? Isn't that interesting? Look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. And a lot of people trip up on this verse and they'll try to, to, to look at it and say, well, what does it mean he was first born? I thought he's always been. How, wh- what does that mean? And for centuries, uh, theologians struggled with this. In fact, uh, we had the, uh, a lot of controversies in the early church trying to figure out the deity of Christ, the humanity of Christ. Uh, the Arians, if you look that up sometime, the Arians, and they totally were, were fighting against uh, the deity of him and saying, well, you've got to be just uh, human, vice versa, going back and forth. And what came out of that was the Nicene Creed that we're going to say in a little bit, right? The Nicene Nicene Creed talks about the firstborn of all creation. That's very important to know that, that he is, eternity, is eternal, right? He is, is equal. He is God. He is one of the persons of God. He has always been there. But what this verse is telling us is that when God created all that, the firstborn, chiefly Jesus, he was right there with him. Right? Genesis 1, 26, it says, let us create God in our image. It meaning the us is that the Trinity was already there. John chapter one talks about the logos who is Jesus, right? The word has become flesh and now dwells with us. So just let that sink in for a second. That firstborn, the one who is preeminent over all, Jesus, who always has been, he came down to be the firstborn of Mary. Right? We just celebrated that. Incredible. And why? Because look at John 3, 16. God so loved. God so loved you that he gave his one first only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, right? It's probably not the first time you've heard that verse but it may be the first time you've dwelt on it in 2017. It's one that people run through their minds over and over. If you're old enough, you've seen at the end of football uh, games in the stadiums, they would have that little placard. People hold up the sign, John 3, 16, right? But how important is it to hear about God's one and only son, his firstborn this new year? Because what is revealed by the firstborn, the first son is this is that when we talk about firsts, we got to talk about sacrifice. You see, when you follow the thread of first in the whole Bible, it is God not thinking of himself first, but thinking of you first. It's about him sacrificing and sacrificing for you. Look at the next one. It says, God loved us. And just if you I haven't figured it out yet, this is the easiest of all year. Every blank is first. Okay. So you can just fill all those out. All right. Very easy. All right. God loved us. First, it says we love because why? He first loved us. And this is so important when it comes to resolutions. I cannot believe I forgot it, but I was going to bring a Reese's peanut butter cup with me. Why? Because I was going to, for the first time in 15 years, eat in front of you while I'm preaching. So everybody, uh, well, probably about 95% of you have made a resolution that we're going to eat better, right? <laughs> eat healthier, exercise more, do all this stuff. And so if I was going to make a resolution that I'm going to like hold off on chocolate for a while and then just eat it right in front of you and break it in like five hours. Because resolutions are for that. 
If you held a resolution from January 1st of 2016 all year, God bless you. You're amazing. But resolutions are kind of tricky on us. It's good to have goals. Don't get me wrong. It's good to plan. It's good to say, I want to do this better in the new year. But sometimes resolutions hold us down in a way that, that we feel uh, so guilty when we don't live up to the perfection, right? The only way we're going to do anything resolution-wise is to know that God loved us first. If I want to do something for the Lord, God loved me first. If I want to love other people, and if I want to be a kinder, gentler person, if I don't want to lose my temper with people, if I want to think of others first, if I want to slow down and actually listen, God loved us first. I say it's a good, a good bet to say that any resolution you've either thought about or made has to include the ability to do it with God loved you first. Because A, it's going to help you to actually accomplish that, knowing it's not me who is doing this, but Christ living inside of me. And B, when we mess up, we know that God still loves me first. He gave us his firstborn, Jesus. And so here's God's challenges for you very quickly for this new year. Number one, faith first, not worry. Faith first. First, not worry. How many of you have gone through the last 15 days thinking, you know what, I'll just think about that January 1st. <laughs> I don't care how I'm eating. I don't care what I'm spending. I don't care what's happening in my family. I'm just going to put all that aside because I have an excuse because it's Christmas time and I'm busy and you just lay it out there and think January 1st. Well, you know what? January 1st is here. And unfortunately, you're not super busy today. It's not like you're going to work and, and you have tomorrow off. Most of you do. Some of you do. And you're thinking, oh, no, now I got to dwell. My mind's going to go crazy. And you're thinking about all that is ahead of you. How am I going to pay off those things I bought? How am I going to reconcile with my family? How am I going to get the goals done in my job that I said I was going to do in November, December, the new year, right? And worry begins to creep in. And here's what God says about this. Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. You remember the context we just read? This is the context of worry. See, Jesus, Jesus hit this hard. A lot of verses in his Sermon on the Mount just on this subject. He knows we are people that are prone to worry, right? And we look at the new year and we say, you know, one of my resolutions is just to totally trust you, God, and not worry at all. And I've already worried today three times. Right? It just comes natural to us. And so Jesus hits it. He says, here's how it works. You realize that God first loves you. And you realize that you are not a part of this world anymore, just this world. You are a part of something bigger. It's called the kingdom of God. Right? And as a part of his kingdom, he says, hey, if you seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all that has to do with me, then all this other stuff that we worry about, it'll get taken care of. It really will. You don't believe me? Look at you. Just look around right now. Y'all had super big challenges in 2016. You're going to have challenges this year too. But look how good God has taken care of you in 2016. Look how good you look on the first day of the year. You do look pretty good. You do. You're chipper. Maybe it's because we're here at 930 instead of 8. I don't know. You look great. Seeking the kingdom of God first. What's that look like? Well, first of all, I want to commend you because as I dwelt on this verse and prayed about it, I thought every person that's here today, you go. Good job. The Holy Spirit nudged on you. You woke up and you said, you know what? I'm going to start my year off right. I'm going to be an example for my family. I'm going to try to reconcile relationships. I see that there are people here today that have had a hard relationship with the person sitting next to them this year. There are people here today with that. And God is speaking to you specifically today saying, you know what? Put the, his kingdom first and all this other stuff. He will work out. He will. Because what we do when we seek his kingdom first is we stop seeking our kingdom first. We stop seek, seeking 
our desires first and we seek what he wants. You spend that time with him, he'll guide you in that. Let yourself be loved by God first. Isn't it so hard to love other people when you don't love yourself? So true. I mean, you have nothing to give when you don't love yourself and you beat yourself up. First John says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another, right? I heard a pastor once say, I can't afford to have thoughts in my head about myself that God doesn't have about me, right? I want to put those thoughts in my head that God has about me so that I can be loved and love other people, right? When we realize that God loved us first, God loves us, we then are a conduit that can flow out and love other people. And finally this, think of others. Oh man, you all got it. You're good. I was hoping this would work out because usually I get three shots at a message and this is the first one and it, it worked out okay. Yeah, all the, I remembered all the blanks just like you did, right? Think of others first. Not so with you. Instead, uh, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. What's the context here in this last verse we're looking at? Matthew 20 is amazing. It says the sons of Zebedee's mom. Okay, that's basically is James and John, one of the two, two of the 12 disciples. So their mom comes and, and pulls Jesus aside and says, hey, I, think, I know things are getting ready to go down. Y'all are in town, big feast. And she's seeing how important he is because uh, the Palm Sunday had happened. Like, hey, I, I, want you to, I want to ask you one thing. Can my boys be like your you're number one and number two in your kingdom, right? And he's like, oh, you totally, totally don't get it, right? Because he that is first will be last and he is last will be first. And what this verse says is whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And so if today you woke up in a natural way, an earthly way, a kingdom of this world way, and the first thing you thought of was yourself, that's kind of how we're made in the fallen world. Uh, we are self-preserving folks. But maybe the more you're in the kingdom of God and the more you allow Jesus to just dwell in you, just maybe the last thing and the first thing you think of is Jesus and somebody else. Say, Lord, how can I find a person today that I can love on through you, right? Who do you want me to go out and share the good news with today? And so that's God's challenge to you. What's your first step? What's your first move? Who's your first person that you need to forgive, that you get to forgive because Jesus makes it possible? Who's the first person that you can take to lunch and share with them what God did in 2016 and what he's going to do in 2017? What's the first book of the Bible that you get to start reading this afternoon? What devotion do you get to start? When, when is the first time you get to start praying with your family? When's the first time you get to hold your wife or your husband and say, you know, well, let's not miss a night of going to bed praying uh, before we turn the lights off. Oh, you got a whole lot in front of you. You got a whole lot of joy, excitement and hope solely because of Jesus in 2017. And it's only the first day. Praise God for his firstborn son. Praise him for loving us first and allowing all of us to be here first to worship him. Amen.